In today's market, where cloud is king, one company is taking care of the tech so you can take care of business. VMware's driving retail, healthcare, and more to greater heights. But can this cloud play keep the competition at bay? I like to come out here to Silicon Valley pretty regularly in order to check in with the companies that are so important to our increasingly digital and technologically driven world. Companies like VMware, VMW, that's a global leader in cloud infrastructure and what's called virtualization. In fact, VMware pretty much pioneered the technology behind virtualization, which lets you create many virtual machines on a single physical server, something that's become almost essential as so many businesses migrate to the cloud. It's also integral to the data center, one of the hottest areas in tech. Now, we know that VMware is in excellent shape. The company reported a terrific quarter at the end of January. They also rolled out a major $1.2 billion buyback. In part, that's because the company got a new deal with Amazon, and it's been blowing the doors off business worldwide ever since its old parent, EMC, was acquired by Dell last year. That's part of the reason why its stock has been such a strong performer over the last 12 months. Can VMware continue to rally, though? Earlier today, I got a chance to chat with Pat Gelsinger. He's the CEO of VMware and Sanjay Poon. Sanjay is the COO to get a better sense to where the company is headed. Take a look. I think you guys may have the strongest business that I saw year over year. And Patrick, let me go to you first. What is the secret with VMware? Because a lot of people want to know, like, why do we want to detach the CPU and memory from the actual hardware? And what's the virtue of hiring VMware? Well, the magic that we've done, and remember, I was 30 years a hardware guy. Okay. So, Jim, you know, it's like, you know, right? And I remember the first time that the VMware execs, Diane and Mendel, came to me and says, we can turn one physical CPU into 10 virtual CPUs. And it's like, why do I want to do that? I'm the hardware guy. Don't I? You know, I, I want to sell hardware. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to save people a fortune. But the magic of turning it into software means it's more efficient. You know, server utilization, 70 80% the ability to move things in software, this idea that workloads can now be agile and move anywhere, and instead of having to pro, uh, provision hardware that may take days, weeks, or months, it's now seconds in software, and that business agility and efficiency just changed the industry, and now you know, it really is a forerunner to everything cloud. You know, Every data center now, 80% of all workloads being run that way, it truly changed the industry. Yeah, forerunner is interesting because I know recently I'm going to use the term that I read in the research. You hugged it out with Amazon. Amazon Web Services is so powerful in the cloud. It looked like a lot of people felt, well, you were going to be doomed to competing with them. That is no longer, Sanjay, the case, right? Absolutely. I mean, this is one of those seminal partnerships. The leader in the public cloud meets the leader in the private cloud. Andy Jassy, our good friend, Pat and myself have been working on this partnership, and it benefits great clients. So for example, you take McDonald's. They were on stage at AWS. They're a big customer of ours and theirs. And Merck, there are many other big, big brands. Right. These are customers of ours and theirs. We are de facto standard in 500,000 customers. But as they build their enterprise credibility and as we build much of our cloud journey, this is a marriage made in heaven. I think and it really, a, and it really sorry, was, Jim, the fact that the leader in public coming together with the leader in private. And lots of people says, hey, workloads are moving to the cloud. Right. But really what was happening is workloads are now being built in the cloud, but existing workloads, they're hard. You know, security, right. provisioning, management. And the idea that we came together, the best of breed in both, to deliver a seamless experience for customers has been absolutely game changing in the industry. You said that you were, uh, you've been first mover for a long time. I, I read through the research and I keep seeing this undercurrent that Microsoft has figured it out and they've got the web. Where, where do you think they are versus you. Well, Mike, Microsoft, good company. Yeah. You know, we've you know worked with them and competed with them, and you know I was the win and tell, right? You know, win tell for thirty <laughs> years of my win career. Tell. So boy, you know, and I did more partnerships with Microsoft than probably right. any human on the planet. But what's happened now is, you know, Amazon really has set the pace right. in the public cloud, and VMware eighty plus percent market share in the private cloud and on premise. And those two coming together, I mean, that is the leading combination. And that's why customers said, hmm, the Microsoft thing, that's interesting. 
the leaders coming right. together to set the pace in the industry, that's game changing. Okay, one of the things that, that are talked about in Washington is the idea of lots of money being repatriated. I was looking at your balance sheet. You do have seven billion overseas. You've got a fabulous buyback. You've got that ownership by EMC now Dell. Would you just keep buying back stock? I mean, you have a lot of excess capital. Well, you know, we've been buying back well ahead of our uh, normal dilution. Right. So this has been very shareholder friendly. And, and boy, the stock's been a rocket. Yeah, the stock's responded well. And uh, we just announced on our last earnings call an additional $1.2 billion that we'll execute uh, this year. Again, well ahead of dilution. So overall, we're generating cash beyond our requirements for our mm -hmm. business. We're going to use it for M&A. We're going to use it for stock buybacks. And boy, if repatriation happens, that just frees up more capital. The, the administration comes with a lot of baggage and a lot of opportunity. Uh, I, I want to get a sense on how, much, how important it is for you guys to uh, have the, the students with visas come here, uh, immigrants with visas come here so that you can maintain your leadership. You've got leadership. Would you lose leadership if you just decided it was America first? It's uh, amazing, you know, for me personally. I'm an immigrant. I came to this country in 1987 on a scholarship to go to Dartmouth College. This Dartmouth. Is an, yeah, it was a, you know, it was a fantastic <laughs> opportunity. I, I grew up in a poor middle class uh, Indian family. There's no way I could have afforded this type of opportunity. Yeah. And then coming out of the Silicon Valley in 1991, this is an amazing place where you work hard, smart people, you can do well. And I think it continues to be a place where we are looking to be pro-business, ways in which we can welcome the appropriate immigrants. H-1B visas are very, very important to us. We've got you know, a number of very strong U.S. locations, from Palo Alto, Atlanta, and others, who we've also got a lot of employees in other places. We export you know, a lot of our software elsewhere. So this is going to be an important area that we'll be watching very closely. Does the 2017 Sanjay come to the United States? I think there's an opportunity where we can have a lot of our impact now in the grander world if we think about the way technology, digital transformation is here to stay. Right. And technology, and our general philosophy is software changes the world. So when we think about the way in which software, software is our birthright, Silicon Valley and the United States. It's the reason people like me are here. Well, and, it's I, so, and it's so important, Jim, because this idea of digital transformation, right. it's, you know, I mean, software is taking over, but also yes. digital transformation is, as I say, tech is breaking out of tech. It's touching every it's aspect right of the business. Well, and that impact on a world basis says, boy, we're not just the leader today, we could be the leader for decades to come. Is that why you talked about in the conference call, you mentioned Japan as a, a barn burner, but right after that you said all regions have growth. Is that because of a secular trend towards software or is the, or the world getting a stronger place? I think overall there's a demand for tech. Leading tech is an important differentiator for businesses on a global basis. Okay. Whether you're a boring you know, supply chain company, a steel company, a How financial... How about an exciting hotel company, Marriott? Any, oh my gosh, you know, Marriott's has been a big partner of ours. Why? You know, why can't they, why, why do they choose VMware? Because what they find is, hey, they're running some of their own data centers. They need to transform that to the cloud. Do they know they about just that bought. Data center? Isn't that what you need you for? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, because they run reservation systems. You know, they are increasingly having an online relationship with their customers. Right. Their customers show up to the hotel straight to the room. They're already checked in. All of those types of things differentiate them, and they're acquiring global companies as well. So they right. need a global footprint. They need global differentiation as they compete on the world scene. Well, I got to tell you, it's one of the strongest companies, strongest stocks, and I really appreciate you coming on because we don't talk enough about your company, and yet it has been the world leader for ages and just took this next step with Amazon. I want to thank Sanjay Poonin. He's the COO, and Patrick Gelson, your CEO of VMware. Gentlemen, thank, thank you so you much very for coming much, on. Love your show. Thank, thank you so thank you. much. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.